Uh, Travis, shall we get started? Yeah, I think we can get started. Great, okay. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, welcome to the session. So what we're looking at today is the career opportunities and benefits for an ACCA pursuing the CFA program. Uh, so the main thing that we're trying to uh, highlight over here is like you guys being ACCA, uh, probably candidates or uh, affiliates, those who have completed the program, like how uh, CFA will add value to you in terms of how you will see linkage between your subjects, as well as uh, in terms of the, uh, let's say in, in, in terms of career, how, how does it help you to progress? So uh, in terms of the agenda, let me just take you all through just to let you all know what we're going to look at today. Uh, so we have the introduction to the CFA program by uh, Shehan Fernando, who's the CFA of, uh, C CEO of Alpha Business School. Uh, and then we have the ACCS subjects connection to the CFA program by myself, uh, Richardson Morales. Uh, then we have the career development in the local and international market with CFA after ACCA. That will be done by uh, Aziz. And then we have the local market experience with ACCA and CFA. Uh, so once we are done with all that, we, you guys will also have the time to ask any questions that you'll have. So without any further delay, let's get started right away to the introduction to the CFA program by uh, Shian Fernando. Shian Fernando, over to you. Thanks, uh, Richardson. Uh, thank you for that uh, nice introduction. So uh, let me share my screen. And uh, yeah. So uh, hi everyone, uh, just going through the uh, participant list. Uh, nice to hear, uh, see some uh, familiar names. Uh, very happy to see that you uh, joined in this program. Uh, I'm Shehan, uh, I'm the CEO and one of the senior lecturers at Alpha Business School. Alpha Business School is the first and only uh, prep provider in uh, Sri Lanka for the CFA program. Uh, who has received the CFA Society Sri Lanka candidate resource partner status. So that itself gives you a little bit of a assurance, okay, or, or at least a very strong assurance uh, in that sense to uh, make you uh, get some confidence about the delivery of the program that we do in terms of the CFA uh, tuition, okay. So uh, we've been teaching CFA now for quite some time in the country. Uh, we haven't had any interruptions from the day we started when we have been continuing the program very smoothly. So I am here today to uh, talk to you about uh, the CFA program and uh, its features and the subjects and a few key characteristics, including certain deadlines, okay, uh, as to when you should register, etc., uh, to make you aware of the entire program. And uh, I, I must tell you before I forget, okay, uh, unlike myself, the other three speakers today, that is Richardson, Dilum, and Abdul, okay, all three individuals are ACCAs who are also CFAs, okay. So, uh, studying or basically uh, learning or getting adding qualifications, okay, is definitely not a very easy task. Okay, it's a task that is very strenuous. Okay, uh, it's not easy, definitely. Okay, it's it's a lot of uh, sacrifices, commitment. Okay, dedication, hardships that you will have to go through. Okay, but as ACCAs, as to be ACCAs, okay, you guys know uh, that uh, what you have gone through so far and why you are here right now is okay. You're feeling yes, we can do better okay, in our careers with the extra qualification. So that's why you are here to listen to us, okay. Uh, and I can assure you that the CFA qualification will undoubtedly help you to achieve that goal, okay. So our three speakers today, who is very near and dear to me, all three of them, okay, uh, will tell you, okay, how they achieve this feat of this uh, completing the CFA program, okay, after completing ACCA and how AC, along with ACCA, 
Okay, the CFA program has helped them to get to where they are today. Okay, so uh, it's it's a more of a experience sharing session today uh, among the three speakers, whereas I'm gonna tell you just about the characteristics of the program. Okay, so uh, do hold on to your questions, or you can just drop it on the chat. Okay. Uh, myself, the speakers, we will be happy to connect with you soon after this session. It will not go for very, very long, okay? Uh, and clarify all the doubts that you have. So I'm proceeding with my presentation. Uh, who can come in for the CFA program? What is the entry requirement is the first question, okay? Uh, so the entry requirement for CFA level one is where you need to have a bachelor's degree or an equivalent program. And right now we are talking about ACCA participants. So ACCA becomes an equivalent program. Okay. But having said that, yes, even if you're after CIMA, CMA, uh, CA Sri Lanka, so other equivalent qualifications which come into the same category. Okay. Uh, you can be an undergraduate student who is still following uh, uh, basically your degree, but within 23 months of graduating, okay? So when you say graduating, you must have some form of evidence over there. So what I'm trying to say is don't think graduating means the day of the ceremony. It's more of the date recorded on your transcripts and certificates, okay? So you have to forecast that day, go back 23 months. If you are within 23 months of that graduation uh, date uh, mentioned on your transcripts, that means you can start off this program, okay? So it used to be in the final year. Now they have uh, made it 23 months, making it more accessible to more students. Uh, professional work experience, okay, have a combination of 4,000 hours of experience, okay? Uh, so that's perfectly fine, okay? So 4,000 hours of work experience, that this does not necessarily say uh, it has to be in the field of finance. So even if you are on the accounting side, auditing side in terms of ACCA, that is perfectly fine if you have 4,000 hours of work experience, okay? Another question which usually comes up is, uh, does the bachelor's degree have to be anything related to finance? Okay, I'm just answering in an overall manner. No, there is nothing which says like that. Any bachelor's degree program is fine as well. You know? Right, so let me move on. So this is the entry requirement, which I believe, okay, uh, all affiliates and ACC members would easily fulfill, okay? So you don't have to think too much whether if you are uh, going to complete the entry requirement, yes or no. Okay, right. Uh, these are the 10 subjects in the curriculum. Okay. We have ethical and professional standards. That's number one and right up there because there's a lot of stress on ethics. Okay. Throughout the CFA curriculum, they're promoting every CFA to be an ethical individual. OK, so there's a lot of stress on ethics. So then there's economics, corporate finance, fixed income, alternative investments, quantitative methods, OK, which can be something a little new to an ACCA, but that's also not entirely new. Certain things you have followed in the curriculum. Uh, financial reporting and analysis, equity investments, derivatives, portfolio management and wealth planning. So the speakers will go into depth on, okay, where you may have touched this in the ACC curriculum as well, just to give you an idea as to what CFA is, okay? So we, we are in this, uh, the session, mainly the focus will be to create a lot of awareness. Uh, the three levels of CFA, so just in case anyone didn't know, CFA has three levels, okay? So just like the ACC qualification, which also has three levels, CFA also has three levels, okay? I'll tell you about the examination structure, okay? Each level has 10 subjects, okay? Uh, as you go along certain taper away, but generally I'll say each level has 10 subjects, okay? So uh, as you can see, the 10 subjects are broken down into th three categories called investment tools, which is the dark blue, okay? And uh, portfolio management, which is the light blue, okay? 
and asset classes, which is somewhat uh, in between blue. Okay, and uh, the fourth, which I missed out, is ethics and professional standards. So notice that the core in all three levels is ethics. Okay, the core in all three levels is ethics. Whereas in level one, you are more focusing on the investment tools, which dies down a little bit and vanishes away almost completely when it comes to level three. Whereas when it comes to level three, okay, or level one, the least important section becomes portfolio management, gradually increased in level two, massive increase in level three. I'll show you the percentages in a little bit. Okay, so this is how the structure is. Uh, unlike other qualifications, it's the same subjects which move on to all three levels. Okay, but obviously when you climb up into the next level, you're on higher levels of knowledge on the same uh, subject area. Okay. So this is what I was mentioning to you, the percentages, okay, as you can clearly see portfolio management, there's a massive increase, okay. Uh, ethics remains pretty much stable throughout the three. As you can see, like what I said, quantitative methods, okay, reducing up to then at the end, it's a zero, FRA, same story, corporate finance is the same story. It, uh, Economics is also reducing. There's a tiny bit in the final level. So then there's equity. Okay. Uh, there you are. Uh, slight increase. Fixed income. Slight increase. Derivatives virtually remains constant. Alternative investments also virtually remains constant. Okay. So certain things are constant as you go along. Certain things, the prominence is increased as you go along. Certain things are massively increased in terms of portfolio management, as you can see. Certain things just die away, okay? Ethics is very strong throughout all three levels and very critical in terms of you passing also. Unlike other qualifications, okay, another feature of this is usually when it comes to other qualifications, including ACCA, you are sitting and passing a particular subject. Okay, here you are not passing the subject, you are passing the entire level. Yes, at the end of the uh, examination, after that time period's up, when the results come to your hands, they will give you how you have fared under each subject. Okay, you, you will obviously see that some will be good, some may are not too great. Maybe I, I'm, I'm hoping someday when you do, okay, the qualification you will see everything to be brilliant okay that's that's my wish for you guys okay uh but having said that okay so they will tell you all of this okay uh with one uh result okay covering everything saying pass or fail okay yeah so one result covering everything mentioning pass or fail so you may have performed very well in certain areas, but unfortunately, if that uh, result says fail, you cannot say, let me repeat the subject areas that I have messed up. And because I have passed these, I've got good grades in this. No, it doesn't work like that. You either pass the entire level or either you fail the entire level. Okay. Uh, if you have heard about this program a little bit, okay, my personal advice, uh, you guys know I'm an ACC lecturer as well, okay? Uh, my personal advice is, okay, this is not something, just to give you an understanding, this is not a qualification which you will find difficult, okay? You're not going to go through the material or follow our classes and you're not going to be blank and say, oh my God, I don't understand this, okay? That's, that's not going to happen, okay? I will assure you that, okay? When you follow our classes, go through the study material, you will understand, okay? So then you might wonder, why, why are the pass rates bad, okay? The pass rates, in my opinion, are not too great because, okay, uh, the commitment, the dedication, the effort that one puts in towards this examination, okay, is not enough because of the volume, okay, of, the, uh, of each level. Okay, so just to tell you a rough idea, I'm not someone who will paint a rosy picture and say, uh, tell a lie to you, okay? 
Now we we followed uh, ACC. You've seen the study text, okay? So you're gonna get uh, six books like that for each level, roughly. And the font of can also be a little uh, tiny, okay? No, no, I'm not by any means trying to discourage you. I want you to do this qualification, okay? But that is the level of effort and commitment that you will have to put in to get through this examination, okay? And trust me, my uh, the other speakers will share their stories, okay? The rewards are just, uh, I don't know, they, they're just waiting for you, you know, okay? It's just, uh, it's a pretty rewarding qualification, you know, okay? So it's it comes with the effort that you put in, okay? So if you take the paper structure, each level has uh, two exams only covering all 10 areas, okay? So one in the morning, one in the evening. If I take level one, 90 multiple choice questions for each paper to be done in two and a quarter hours. So roughly about one and a half minutes per question, okay? Independent questions. One question is not related to another, okay? So uh, roughly one and a half minutes. It's a time constraint examination. You will understand. Because there have been many who said we, we ran short of time. So that's also something that you will have to practice trying to stick to time, okay? Uh, when it comes to level two, it becomes 45 MCQs, but it's item set questions, as in they'll give you a tiny scenario. And from that, they'll ask you about five to six questions, maybe. There'll be seven to 12 sets like that in each paper, adding up to a total of 45 MCQs, two papers like that, okay? Level three, uh, that's where half of the paper is MCQ based. And for the first time, you're gonna type answers when it comes to the papers paper in level three, there's essay type questions. Just to let you know, for level one, each MCQ question has three answers only, okay? So uh, maybe you didn't know it was a MCQ based examination, there you are, okay? So even with this, okay, uh, basically, uh, if you're thinking the pass rates are low, okay, but I'm telling you, this is something that you guys can understand without an issue, okay? I can confirm that, okay? But you have to find the time to go through this, okay? To sit for classes, to study, okay? CFA Institute has recommended a 300 hours, for, to be allocated for level one, okay? So moving on to the next slide, the fee, just in case anyone does not know, uh, you have to pay uh, basically the entire fee, although I have given breakups, you will have to pay together, okay? After creating an account by yourself from where you are at home or wherever you are in, okay? Uh, through the cfainstitute.org website, okay? That's the website that you need to get into. So everything has to be paid. So what do you mean by everything, if you ask me? There's a registration fee of 350. Then there's the examination fee. Uh, depends on when you are enrolling. There's an early bird entry and a standard entry. I'm sharing details for the November exam and the February 25 exam. Okay, so uh, and the total generally everyone nowadays will manage with ebooks, but if you are that person who wants those printed set of books, okay, then you are talking about an additional 170 USD giving you a total of so much. Notice that for exams in 2025 onwards, okay, there's a less than 5% increase, okay, after a very long time that too, okay of 50 USD for the uh, early entry and 40 USD for the standard entry, okay? So kind reminder, maybe you are looking at sitting for this examination in November, 2025, okay? In which case, this is something that you should be very much aware of. 16th of April is your deadline, okay? If you have decided November, please don't waste time Okay, please don't waste money as well. There's a difference of $310, okay, if you pass this day. If you are doing the exam, any way you are doing the exam, might as well register early, okay? 
right so that's how that works for the november examination they're giving you the exam window okay once you register they will communicate to you uh the registration deadline that is where there comes a particular day where before that day you got to uh, decide on the day on which you are going to do the exam subject to availability and uh, on a first come first serve basis they would uh, select the uh, basically they would allow the candidates to select the available slots so 13th to 19th november is where the uh, exam uh, is when the exam is going to be held okay so uh, i know some of you all uh, i know personally some of you all are joining not from sri lanka right now okay so uh, still the exam window will be the same, but if you are in another country, so you will have to select that exam center uh, in that particular respective country. Right. So maybe some of you all are thinking, how fast can we get this done? Okay. So if you sit for the November 2024 level one examination, okay, the fastest you can get to level two will be May 25. And the fastest you can get to level three is uh, basically February 26. Okay. So we start in May. Uh, May to February is uh, 21 months. Okay. So in a time span of 21 months, okay, uh, you will be able to complete this program if you decide to sit for those said exams at the set time. So level one is offered, as you can see, four times a year. Level two is offered three times a year. Level three is offered only two times a year. Okay. So this is how the plan works. So just so that you can understand uh, basically how your journey should be. Uh, we're starting a program on the 26th of May. Dates have been finalized. Okay. Okay. Uh, for November 2024 and February 2025 exam sessions, okay? Uh, the individuals whom you see uh, are all CFA individuals, okay? They are done with all CFA exams. Majority of them are CFA charter holders, okay? And experienced individuals as well in terms of lecturing, so all of them are, none of these individuals are newly recruited people teaching uh, for the first time in their lives. No, okay. They have taught in the past, okay. So a very experienced uh, uh, lecture panel in terms of lecturing as well as they have their industry experience as well. Some of you all may have heard of these names as well, okay. So what do our classes or, or what do we offer in terms of classes, okay? So there's uh, uh, the live classes along with the recordings, okay? You will get the recordings as well. Uh, maybe you have some time differences. Maybe you are unable to join certain classes. You may be concerned, okay? Yes, we share the recordings. As I mentioned, an industry experience CFA charter hold the lecture panel, okay? Uh, we are going to provide the CFA calculator, okay, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator. And uh, we will also teach you how to use that calculator as well, along with the fee that we charge, okay, which is 110,000 as of now, okay. We also provide a free revision program as well, which is of roughly about 50 hours, okay. So the entire program will be, including the 50 hours of revision, will come to something like 250 hours of live lessons, okay? So to make you understand that it's a very, uh, it's, it's, it's not a short course, okay? So I, I remember when long years ago when we started this program, okay, uh, there was someone who asked me, why do you have so many hours of classes, okay? Answer is simple because the program is huge. The content that we need to cover is quite significant, okay? And it has to be properly covered, okay? Uh, those who know Alpha Vista School and uh, basically the founders know our values and how we have been teaching over the years. So we're not going to compromise anything for uh, those who participate for classes, okay? Right. Uh, we also offer a level two uh, revision program as of now.
providing not only revision, but also a little bit of an overview of each subject as well. Again, with a panel of lecturers who are CFA charter holders, okay? So as of now, okay, we, we plan to roll out the full session of level two and level three in time to come. But as of now, what we have on our cards is basically the level one syllabus and revision program coming together and level two revision program uh, also, that's also there. One of which, which we will start in the month of April for those who are sitting for examining in me, the level two, okay, right. So uh, that's about it, okay. I will hand over back to uh, Richard, sir, and uh, he will speak to you about uh, how ACCA and CFA, the combined combination has helped him. And thereafter, the other speakers also will speak to you, but I'll be there on the call uh, along with the other speakers to answer questions if any, okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Shehan. I think it was great I, the way you, uh, you know, explained them about the syllabus structure as well as like how classes are being conducted because that's one question I think most of you guys might anyway be having like as ACC students, how do I start? Uh, what are the requirements? So I think you got a good idea about that. And uh, just like you mentioned, if any questions, we will take it over uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, let me share my screen once again, guys. Yeah, hope you all can see my screen. Uh, so it's actually supposed to be my, I mean, the, the next uh, in the agenda is my uh, session. But what I thought was uh, we will now uh, we will now have Aziz's one that is on career development in the local and international market with CFA after ACCA. And then I will take over because of the breakfast, we felt it's better if he goes. And then once he's done, we will uh, right away get started with the, with the one that we are, uh, you know, uh, alternating at the moment. Yeah, Aziz, over to you. Yes. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Richardson. And thank you, Shaman, for the presentation as well. I think this is a great resource because back in our time when we were doing C a CCA and CFA, you know, uh, we really didn't have a lot of resources like this. So it's great that, you know, a lot of this is available. So I would, you know, encourage everyone to, you know, take advantage of this and, you know, uh, try to take use of this as best as possible. So yes, uh, let's get started. So I'm Aziz, I'm an associate director at UserBase, and I basically oversee uh, industry research teams that look at you know uh, industry research on financial services and healthcare related industries. So for those who don't know, uh, so UserBase is basically a Tokyo headquartered firm, which gives you know business intelligence platforms, which is used by a lot of corporates and venture capitals across the world. So the Sri Lankan office basically uh, maintains and writes contents and industry reports, which, you know, go there. So before I started here, I worked at KPMG in corporate finance and deal advisory where I was there for around five years. So through this session, you know, I hope to share a bit of my experience, you know, uh, after ACCA, what made me choose the CFA program and how it kind of helped me uh, throughout my career as well. So I started ACC around 10 years ago. Uh, that's where my journey started. And like a lot of you here, you know, I also wasn't really sure where I wanted to go in my career. Obviously, I was doing ACC and I wanted to get into finance, but we are specifically whether accounting or, you know, financial management, or auditing, you know, that was still a bit of a gray area. Uh, but however, you know, with subjects like financial management or AFM, you know, those kind of subjects were like were comparatively more interesting for me. So I was always keen to, you know, explore those kind of areas. So when I started working at KPMG, you know, I was really interested in seeing, you know, how a lot of the concepts we learned in ACCA, you know, things like uh, financial reporting and, you know, things, even a lot of the financial management concepts like, you know, CAPM and beta and weighted average cost of capital, all of those being applied in a real life scenario. Like a lot of the financial reporting we learned in ACC is a lot to do with, you know, uh, preparing financial statements, financial reporting, taxes, and all of that. Whereas uh, when I started work, it was all about, you know, analyzing the financial statements, you know, trying to understand what's driving revenue, why are the 
margins declining or why it's going up, you know, trying to understand the why behind the financial statement. So that part of the job was, you know, pretty interesting to me. And as I kind of went along with my career and as I kind of uh, was finishing ACCA uh, while speaking to my uh, colleagues at the company and even some of the seniors who had done CFA, I sort of was sure that this was the way to go if I want to, you know, continue in this profession. So with that, I started doing uh, CFA and I actually finished my level one and two while I was working there. So uh, like Shayan sir alluded to at the beginning as well. So it's not a easy qualification, not in terms of the content, but more so in terms of the commitment needed. And if you look at, you know, doing it while you're working is especially challenging. So uh, fortunately with Having done ACCA, that kind of gave a good foundation for me, especially in subjects like financial reporting and analysis, and even a lot of like equity and corporate finance related subjects. There was a bit of a base given by ACCA, which we could build on. And that kind of helped me, especially, you know, in level one, at least when I was doing it, uh, financial reporting and analysis had like a very large weight. So that subject was, you know, quite content heavy. So Having that base with ACCA kind of helped me focus on the other new things that were being added to CFA and not, you know, focusing heavily on fundamentals. So that, you know, helped me save a lot of time. And obviously, you know, having worked in the industry for like a year at that point, you know, gave me a bit of advantage in terms of preparing as well. So when I finished, you know, our level one and level two, then, you know, before CFA, a lot of the concepts of valuations and the work itself, I had learned, you know, uh, through my colleagues or through my seniors. So it was a very unstructured, for lack of a better word. Whereas with CFA, I think uh, not only it helped me, you know, advance my technical skills, but also gave me sort of a framework to apply, uh, say, or rather to analyze companies or to apply valuation methodologies. Now, for example, earlier, you know, we used we would have referred like uh, a model already done to see how it's carried out. You know, if it's say if you're valuing a company in the manufacturing sector, we would look at already carried out models in the manufacturing sector to see how it's done and not really uh, try to think out of the box. Whereas, you know, after having a sort of a structured learning experience, I was able to apply those frameworks uh, more innovatively and, you know, try to apply in not only different use cases, but also across different industries as well. So I feel like having that kind of structured learning kind of unlocked a new uh, path to my career. Like, you know, I was able to work on more complex projects and more complex assignments on my own, you know, without having a lot of uh, supervision and, you know, a lot of input from uh, like supervisors as well. So that was a, I would say a good, E development as well and then also you know talking about that framework you know that also helps you structure your thoughts and your justifications better there's a lot of the work we do when it comes to valuations or investment research end of the day it has to be presented to a client whether it's in a written form or in a presentation so having that sort of framework helps you you know structure your thinking and present it more confidently which you know end of the day uh, inspires confidence with the client also, and they are likely to give you, you know, more work and more assignments as well. So that's kind of how, you know, CFA helped me accelerate in terms of my corporate finance and the deal advisory role. And then as I moved on to my current role, you know, a lot of questions, you know, because the role that I have now doesn't have a lot of numbers. So it's more industry research and it's very qualitative. So unlike, you know, a typical corporate finance role where you have to do financial modeling, you know, crunch numbers, try to identify, you know, uh, valuations and NPVs and whatnot. This is more qualitative. So a question I get asked often by like new joiners or even interview candidates is that, you know, uh, how can a CFA charter holder add value to a role like this? Or what can, how can CFA help me in a role like this? So the... Sorry about that. Yeah. So the answer to that question is also kind of what I mentioned earlier is that uh, the framework and that concepts which get instilled uh, by the qualification. Because even though uh, industry research role doesn't really have numbers, 
a lot of the questions we ask ourselves, you know, when evaluating industries or, you know, trying to identify the potential is the same as the questions you would ask if you are, you know, valuing a company or trying to forecast financial state. So a lot of the frameworks you learn through CFA when it comes to, uh, you know, forecasting finances and all of that can uh, be applied in these use cases as well. And if at all, this speaks to the versatility of the CFA qualification, because it's not all about, you know, just analyzing numbers and, you know, uh, analyzing financial statements, but it's about the concepts you learn and how you can apply those to other qualitative aspects as well. So that has been a key kind of benefit, I would say, because even for me, uh, it me switching roles from a heavily number-driven role to a non-numerical role was also a big move. And I think having this kind of framework helped me as well to adjust to the role better and kind of apply my learnings from my experience and from my education here as well much easily. So that has been a good way. And I think another key thing which, you know, sort of cements CFA as like the go-to qualification for financial markets is, you know, at my current role, we talk a lot with clients in the US and Japan, but predominantly in the US. And given CFA is a US qualification, you know, the moment a client realizes that you're a CFA, there's that sort of instant respect and recognition that comes. So anything you mention or any advice you give or any sort of opinion you give, uh, that's instantly, you know, magnified or has given so much more weight when they realize it's coming from a CFA charter holder because they know, you know, a CFA charter holder obviously has done their due diligence and is, you know, acting in the best interest uh, because of all the, you know, ethics and the emphasis on ethics the qualification has. So that has generally been my experience so far uh, with the qualification. Uh, just one, you know, brief thing I want to touch on, you know, before I hand it back to Richie. So if you look at the market today, you know, especially the Sri Lankan market on financial analysts, right? So we are in a very interesting situation where, you know, a lot of the good financial analysts have, you know, either left the country or, you know, or whoever that's remaining is, you know, very well looked after by their company. So I would say now is actually a very good time to pursue CFA and, you know, look into the financial markets field in the country. Because one, you know, the markets are slowly stabilizing and, you know, starting to recover. And also even us, you know, when we try to hire people, it's really hard to find very good analysts. And the companies are placing a very high value on really good financial analysts who not only have the right education experience. So in this case, you know, a CFA charter holder with ACCA under their belt is, you know, extremely valuable. Plus those who come with, you know, really good work experience are rated very highly by companies as well. And that's something we are seeing firsthand in the market. So that's something, you know, I like to give an insight on, you know, that's something that's happening in the market. And that's, you know, something that you should really consider when deciding whether or not to do CFA, because now I think is the right time and there has never been a better time to do it. Yeah. So with that, I think I hope that gave you a bit of insight on how CFA fits into like industry research and, you know, those sort of roles. But, you know, if you have any questions, just feel free to you know, drop it on the chat or reach out to any of us and, you know, happy to answer anytime. Uh, yeah, Richard, it's an over to you if there's nothing. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, Aziz. Yeah, I think uh, that was a really great uh, experience that you've been, uh, I mean, what you have come across with ACCA and uh, CFA because that's something that a lot of I think the ones who are here uh, a, a lot of uh, students as well as even ACC affiliates always have that uh, problem as to how does ACC and CFA complement each other uh, and as you all saw the way Asis uh, you know progressed in his career like from from KPMG to even now uh, at the user base where he is uh, talking to US clients as well as you know like how CFA has helped him to uh, progress overall in his career uh yeah thanks aziz and also really appreciate that given the fact that you were fasting you 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 took the time to do this for us thanks a lot for it no worries Jesus. happy to be here. thank you so uh let me share my screen again guys 
Okay, so I think it's time for my session now. Right, so um, as you guys are aware, I think some I, I also see uh, a lot of family names, just like uh, Shehansa mentioned, uh, because most of you guys might be knowing me because I uh, lecture for AFM at Alpha Business School. Uh, so what I thought was today, I think a question that I get from a lot of my students are that, you know, uh, what, what, how does ACCA and CFA, you know, in terms of subjects, in term, like how does how does this uh, sort of complement each other like are we do we find it easier do we find it more difficult so i thought like you know like, let me just clear that for y'all giving y'all an in-depth in uh, understanding into uh, you know like how each subject sort of connects right so anyways uh, before i do that let me just i'm sure you guys are already aware of this right uh, so let me anyways just uh, take y'all through once again just to show you what subject so to be honest, guys, not all the subjects in ACCA, of course, do relates to uh, or sort of you will see it in CFA again. Because as you all are aware, like in ACCA, we do have, for example, let me just, you know, keep it as a summary. We have taxation, we have uh, things like audit and, uh, you know, like uh, even corporate business law. So you don't see these, you know, in uh, the CFA qualification, right? So where do you see a lot of linkage happening he is basically uh, in accounting and finance related subjects. Okay. But you guys know, of course, ACCA being an accounting, accounting and finance uh, subject, you know, that's, that's the main nature of that qualification. We have a majority of our subjects, which uh, are covering these areas. Right. So as you can see at your, uh, you know, at the foundation level at applied knowledge, your, we had financial accounting. Right, so you all have financial accounting, and then uh, if you look at for applied skills, you have both financial reporting, which is again the representation of financial accounting, as well as financial management coming in. And finally, even at the even at the final level, at the strategic professional level, you do see that we have the strategic uh, business reporting, which is the the basically the advancement of financial reporting, and we have the AFM, advanced financial management. Okay, so as you can see, this many subjects are linked to what you will see in CFA. So now let me take you all through like each of those areas. So like I said, broadly, I would see it in two areas as accounting as one and finance as another. Okay. And then I will show you all like where, what are the links that you will see? I'll keep it very brief to what links you would see. And uh, also like how it sort of helps you if you're pursuing CFA to do next. Right. And I'll also show you, ideally you guys are the candidates to do CFA. Right. So, in terms of uh, accounting, so as I said, you see it on financial accounting, <clears throat> you see it on financial reporting, and then you see it on the strategic business reporting. So that's, we have at all three stages of ACCA. When it comes to CFA, we have the subject called financial statement analysis, FSA. Okay. So um, in CFA, of course, just like how uh, uh, Shianza mentioned, you see that there is always a weightage, right, in, for every subject. So that's how, you know, you have all of them being done together. Rather than, I know you, you guys are used to doing uh, each subject wise, right? So in ACC, you have the uh, option to even do one subject or two subjects or three, depending on whichever you, I mean, how, how comfortable you are with it, right? So when it comes to CFA, of course, you don't have a choice as such. You have to do everything together. So when it's level one, level one is like, which consists of about 10 subjects. So in that FSA is one of the most important subjects also. Especially when you see in level one, it's about 11 to 14 percent. And then uh, in level two, it's about 10 to 15 percent. So let me show you the content that sort of links between these two, right? Uh, so first of all, in terms of accounting terms and definitions, I mean, come on, you guys know each and every accounting term and definition, like the depth that ACCA goes into starting from your, uh, base, I mean, starting from the foundation to all the way to professional level. You see that you it's all about those accounting terms. So you see those accounting terms and definitions again in CFA as well, right? So it's nothing new to you. Like, trust me, let me give you a personal experience also. When I was, uh, when, when I initially started uh, CFA, right? Just after my ACCA, when I started CFA, uh, I did find FSA, this particular subject, quite, uh, quite easy, I would say, right? And I, and, uh, I think I did score more than 90 percentile on that as well. Trust me, that foundation was because of ACCA. So one thing that I would say is like FSA is something that directly relates to it. Let's say because you already know your terms and conditions, right? You know how to analyze statements. 
right? And we also see accounting standards. The main difference, I would say, when it comes to CFA is you also see a lot of uh, US GAAP standards coming in, whereas I'm sure you guys are most uh, familiar with the um, IFRS, right? So that's, that's one additional thing which you might have to learn in CFA. But again, of course, given the fact that you know these standards already, it will definitely complement for you. And then also in terms of financial reporting. So you guys know what balance sheets are, you know what, uh, you know, your, your cash flow statements and uh, the notes and, you know, everything that you would have learned, especially coming to uh, at the strategic provision level when you look at SBR, right? Because I'm sure all you guys will anyway go through SBR because all these three subjects which I have, uh, you know, shown in on this slide are not optional subjects. They are all subjects which, uh, you know, you have to do to complete the qualification. So definitely in terms of FSA, you guys have a very good added advantage, right? Trust me, I've been through that path. I'm someone who have, who, who finished CFA and I mean, ACC and then I went to CFA. So for me, it did help. So this is one of the questions that I always get from my students as well, uh, in terms of how the link works. So you can see it directly for account, right? And then this is the most interesting one, right? That's your financial management subject. So as you guys are aware, when it comes to financial management, right? So we do see in ACCA at two stages. One is in the second stage, that is applied skills. You see it at the financial management subject. This subject, to be honest, is a very good base for your CFA, particularly for CFA level one, right? Thereafter, of course, with level one, and then when you advance, those basics just carry a lot of uh, benefits, right? And again, that's not a optional subject. It is something compulsory. But again, AFM is definitely a subject which is going to help you a lot when it comes to CFA, okay? Because, uh, and I'm sure majority of you guys choose AFM when it comes to optional, un unless you guys want to go into auditing or uh, taxation. Majority of you all, I'm, I'm sure, will be choosing AFM as your optional subject. So as you can see, with financial management, the sort of linkage we see, is in four subjects, right? That's in corporate issuers, derivatives, equity, and fixed income. Let me just give you a briefing on uh, areas that we sort of cover uh, within these subjects in CFA and then uh, how it links, right? So corporate issuers, as you can see, it's about 6 to 9% and about 5 to 10% in level two. And uh, investment appraisal, right? So that's you in, in, let's say, in AFM, investment appraisal, we go like a lot, into depth, right? Coming, I mean, not just the basic uh, investment appraisal, but into international investment appraisal, even adjusted present value and so on. So that basic el uh, helps a lot. And I think, to be honest, like in level one, in CFA even, you won't go a lot of depth into that investment appraisal. Level two and three, yes, right? But of course here, we corporate issuers, you only see it until level two. In level two, you do, you do see a bit of that, but not fully covered on that extent. But of course, in terms of basic knowledge, when it comes to investment appraisal, it helps a lot. Okay. And cost of capital, you know, I mean, back cost of equity and the cost of debt, sorry, cost of debt. So all these you do cover from financial management itself, which is not a, which is not an optional subject. So even if you have not done AFM, still you see the basics you get from FM will help you for your CFA qualification. Then of course, other areas like ESG, uh, dividends and share repurchases right? And even corporate restructuring. So <clears throat> all these you would see on your CFA level one and two, right? So I'm not specifying exactly in which level, but I'm just keeping it like an overall broad view on the subject. And uh, as you can see, how much the, the, the link that you see between uh, ACC and CFA, right? And uh, <clears throat> then moving on to derivatives. I think this is one of the areas where you do get a lot of added advantage when you're coming from ACC, right? Because in ACC, uh, we learn currency hedging, we learn interest rate hedging, right? We learn sort of like a, a very uh, a detailed uh, syllabus that we have co covering forwards, futures, swaps, options, uh, you know, all those uh, derivative instruments, right? So here, if you see in CFA, mostly we focus on, um, it comes to stock derivatives, right? Compared to we are in ACC, we focus more on the currency and the interest rate. We do focus on some of the interest rate uh, derivatives as well. So there you go in terms of derivative basics, you are covered. And then equity. So this, of course, has a lot of linkage, right? That is especially if you see 
equity is a major subject 11 to 14 percent covered in level one and then if you see in level two 10 to 15 and it also is in level three which is about 10 to 15. so business valuation of course you would have learned how to do the dscf calculation market-based valuations asset-based valuation and so on so all these you do get on your cfa qualification as well of course see the level of depth that we look at in cfa of course is much more deeper but what we are trying to explain for you guys is that you guys have a good foundation set. So you guys are the ideal candidates to do CFA. Okay, especially if you are pursuing finance as your qualification, you know, as your career in the future, CFA is a definite value addition. As you can see, uh, all of us uh, have CFA after ACC and how much it has helped us in terms of our career, right? And how we, how we have progress. And uh, next, moving on to fixed income. Yes, they are also, if you see, your interest rate risk and return, credit risk, bond valuation, term structure of interest rates. So all these areas we cover, especially in AFM, but you also cover bit on FM. But if you see, these are being, uh, you know, uh, again, tested for you in CFA, right? So this is, like you can see, it's not just one or two areas, but there are multiple areas that you see that, uh, which is already you guys have the foundation. So I don't know what's stopping you guys from starting CFA if you think, that uh, this is not the qualification for you. So that's what I wanted to take you all through on uh, at this point. Uh, thanks, guys. So uh, let me keep any questions that you all have on this as well as on the other, uh, uh, you know, like the, the speeches that we have. You guys can, you all are welcome to ask any questions that you all have towards the end of the session. Uh, let's, uh, next, we will get started with uh, Dilum session. So Dilum, as you guys know, is from NDBIB. So he will take you all through the local market experience that he that he sort of gained having uh, you know having gained CFA after ACC. Uh, over to you, Dilum. Thank you, Richie. Uh, I will share my screen. Uh, so hope uh, everyone can see, right, Richie? Uh, no, Dilum, can't. Dilum? I can't see. It. Yeah, can't. Can you reshare again and see? Okay. Uh... Yeah, can see now, Dilum. Right. Okay. Great. So, Good afternoon, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you. First of all, uh, uh, thank you for Alpha Business School, uh, Shehan sir, and Richie and CF Institution uh, for organizing this kind of an uh, kind of a interactive session because uh, we do uh, we didn't have uh, this type of uh, opportunities during our I mean those days where we uh, did ACCA and uh, also uh, CFA. So uh, at the same time, uh, I still can remember in 2017, uh, I started my ACCA uh, and Shansa also lecturing me. So today uh, we are here to, I mean, uh, as our uh, previous speakers also uh, explained to you all, how this uh, pursuing ACCA would benefit to CFA. So I will talk about some of my experiences as well as how this uh, ACCA subjects and CFA subjects uh, link to each other and uh, help us to develop our career plans and uh, career goals. So first of all, uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, I have small uh, kind of a agenda. I would do a small introduction and how this ACCA is going to act as a bridge to CFA qualification and then advantages of pursuing CFA qualification and how uh, my experience in NDB Investment Bank and uh, previous employment uh, also how uh, ACCA and CFA has helped me to grow uh, as a kind of a, a finance professional. So as you know, uh, in the finance industry, there are several, I mean, abundance of qualification out of this uh, CPA is one thing and ACCA, CFA, one of the main important, I mean, main uh, famous qualifications. So out of that today, our topic is ACCA and CFA. So once uh, this kind of, I mean, a lot of uh, qualifications, maybe it can be MBAs, uh, finance, uh, maybe diplomas and others, 
maybe i know that uh, you also uh, maybe in kind of a indifferent uh, situation where what qualifications to start or what qualifications to pursue so that's the main objective of today's uh, session so today we are talking about starting acca or doing acca complete acca and start your next uh, qualification that is cfa how acca will help you to uh, do i mean uh, uh, complete uh, cfa in a effective manner so i would say acca for me i started acca around 2017 and i finished acca around 2019 during that time i was a uh, credit analyst at uh, corporate banking unit in union bank of uh, colombo plc so acca acca i would say uh, acc also mainly focus on as shehan said uh, cfa is mainly focus uh, i mean cfa is one of the main subject is ethics 15% uh, to 15 to 20% weightage is given to uh, ethics so i would say in acc also you have to complete kind of a ethics module right so that ethics module and all those i mean as an investment professional or the finance professionals uh, we have to have that kind of ethics because we are always dealing with kind of a money and uh, maybe numbers right so we have to have our ethics so i can remember uh, one of my bosses uh, during that time in union bank has uh, told me when i joined to union bank uh, as a credit analyst dilum the integrity is the paramount important thing in this banking or the capital market or the finance industry so integrity is paramount important thing so that is ethics so ethics should have so so acca is i mean acca emphasize the importance of having ethics ethical or professionalism uh, in yourself uh, and as well as so moving on to the cfa from acca will help you to uh, i mean maybe in practical terms or maybe in examination terms to uh, continue that ethics or ethical perspective uh from your inner right so second one i would say acca would be acting as a bridge to cfa is strong foundation and finance accounting so i would take the third step also maybe quantitative skills so acca which he explained acca is having uh, a deep understanding or deep uh, dive into financial analysis maybe acca is having this financial management uh, financial reporting Uh, those different i mean advanced financial management advanced performance management advanced uh, uh, financial reporting which covers uh, this accounting standards ifrs or maybe generally expect, accepted uh, accounting principles those kinds of things so number crunching is there so i would say cfa is also mostly mostly it it is about uh, numbers and analysis and everything so if you are pursuing cfa or if you are doing cfa now and uh, so after completing your cfa uh, acca definitely you can move on to starting cfa uh, because of this strong foundation financial analytical thinking and everything you are i mean you are uh, equipped with everything from cfa when going to uh, from acca when going to cfa so i would say uh, for me as a, a finance professional acca is my starting point for the professional uh, career i mean professional education and then i move to cfa and i have seen several interns maybe several uh, maybe my subordinates i have seen the people who pursuing acca qualification or people who have completed acca has uh, a better opportunity or they they found it easier uh, to complete cfa otherwise uh, i mean that's why i told you acca has acted kind of a bridge to cfa so i have seen that uh, people are easily getting through uh, cfa uh, i mean uh, people who uh, started i mean completed acca are uh, easily uh, pass the cfa examinations because of these things so i would coming to i mean i i am coming to this uh, what are the advantages of cfa program so 
personally personally i have from 2021 i am experiencing this uh, advantages in terms of mainly uh, one thing is uh, maybe higher earning potential i am not earning that much but uh, i would say that my uh, promotions promotions during this ndb investment bank was mainly due to uh, cfa and also uh, i have changed my i mean jobs from one employer to another so when moving on to one employer to another the cfa qualification also very well recognized and also this acca qualification also very well recognized so you have these professional qualifications i mean from acca to cfa and once you i as shanser mentioned once you pass those qualifications you can uh, feel that benefits so higher earning potential is one thing and higher promotions those kinds of things as well as i would say geographical diversification versus career diversification if you uh, pursue this cfa uh, qualification uh, the cfa qualification has 10 subjects right so if we take uh, investment management uh, portfolio management investment banking maybe uh economics i mean economist and everything there are i mean career diversification in terms of if you want to join to an investment bank you can do with that cfa knowledge if you want to join for maybe asset management company you can do with the portfolio management knowledge if you want to join a treasury department of a bank then you can do with those derivatives and other knowledge uh, uh, you gain through this cfa program and as well as if you want to Uh, develop a, maybe a credit analyst or financial analyst there is the opportunity if you pursue acc and cfa programs by yourself and also geographical diversification as you can see maybe sri lanka is not known for i mean maybe we all know that sri lanka is known for uh, ceylon tea as well as sri lanka cricket right apart from that sri lanka is very i mean people that doesn't know about sri lanka uh, but if you see a guy who is with uh, cfa qualification i would say dilum fernando cfa so people know that you have this qualification so uh, people got to know you i mean getting to know you by your qualification cfa is a globally recognized qualification it people are uh, introducing it as a uh, global passport so you uh, trust me you will get several opportunities via linkedin definitely because personally i have got uh, those kinds of uh, job opportunities maybe in middle east lot of opportunities are there if you are going to uh, planning to maybe doing a job outside uh, maybe middle east maybe usa so definitely you have i mean geographical diversification in the sense you have several uh, uh, not only sri lanka you can explore different kinds of opportunities in different countries and different regions and a quality mark because cfa uh, as per my knowledge uh, sri lanka has only 200 cfa charter holders so that make i mean that uh, see how this uh, qualification is worth and uh, how this uh, people who is possessing this qualification uh, is uh, i am sure will look after by their employers so i would say how this uh, cfa is uh, influencing uh, my career in investment bank at ndb investment bank so i am currently an associate vice president of ndb investment bank we have uh, two divisions mainly debt capital market side as well as uh, the corporate advisory side so in my i am attached to debt capital market side but i am uh, doing uh, some of the transactions or some of the uh, maybe some work in my other department as well corporate advisory side where they involve in uh, equity side of uh, transactions so my main uh, uh, work is towards maybe structuring uh, syndication loans maybe structuring debentures uh, identifying fundraising opportunities for uh, maybe larger conglomerates so identifying uh, larger uh, 
I mean, larger fundraising opportunities for bigger companies as well as balance sheet restructuring of several uh, distress uh, company. So uh, I would explain uh, how these uh, uh, different types of subjects in CFA curriculum as well as ACCA curriculum help me. So if I take first uh, corporate finance subject, corporate issuers, actually now those days it was corporate finance, corporate issuers subject, we all know uh, in ACC also we are in advanced financial management as well as uh, normal I mean, uh, financial management subjects. We all know how to, I mean, we learn how to calculate IRR, how to calculate NPV, how to evaluate a new project, how to do a kind of a cash flow uh, thing. So what is operating leverage? What is, uh, I mean, ratio and those kinds of things. So corporate issuers and financial management definitely I have to use in my day-to-day -day, uh, work because I have to analyze several companies. I have to analyze their debt serviceability. I have to analyze how strong their financials are. So in uh, financial reporting, uh, advanced financial reporting as well as financial analysis, maybe it would be a ratio analysis or it would be a common size balance sheet analysis. It, it would be a uh, different types of analysis. We all know that we are doing in ACCA as well as we are doing in CFA as well. So if we take uh, those kinds of analysis techniques, I am using uh, in my day-to-day -day work. So being attached to debt capital markets division in NDB Investment Bank, so I have to uh, use my fixed income knowledge. I mean, knowledge I have gained through the fixed income subject in CFA. So what is, I mean, how to do a bond valuation? how to, uh, what are the different types of markets, I mean, uh, debt markets uh, in the world as well as Sri Lanka. And uh, what are the, uh, I mean, as you always know that uh, recently what has happened in Sri Lanka, bond markets and those kinds of things. So that knowledge I have gained through fixed income subject. I, I am using my day-to-day -day, uh, work. So as well as uh, in economics also, we are identifying uh, how the supply and demand, those kinds of things also I have to use. I mean, it's kind of a blended thing. It's kind of a blended thing where we are using uh, economics knowledge. I mean, knowledge we have gathered through economics and uh, the other subjects in our day-to-day -day, uh, operations. Maybe financial reporting analysis. So we all know that from ACC, ACC is mainly financial accounting about financial accounting it is mainly debit and credit so we and uh, acca is uh, getting uh, financial reporting and advanced financial reporting as well so uh, in cfa also we have a subject called financial reporting analysis so uh, as a, i mean i have to play sometimes i have to play the role of investment bank as well as i have to play the role of financial analyst so uh, that knowledge is really important for me when doing my day-to-day uh, -day work in debt capital markets division of my uh, NDB investment bank. So when I talk to you about uh, how this, uh, I mean, our corporate advisory side, what they are doing is they are structuring IPOs, they are structuring uh, maybe valuation assignments, maybe they are uh, doing this divestments, mergers and acquisitions. So we have to do valuations valuations about a particular company so what is the as the uh, equity lecturer of alpha business school so uh, level one we all uh, i mean if you uh, if you are coming to uh, cfa level one lectures after completing cf uh, acca you will get to know equity valuation techniques, different types of equity valuation techniques, maybe discounted cash flow techniques, maybe free cash flow technique, maybe multiple base valuation, maybe residual income valuation. There are several mul uh, valuation techniques. So our the other side of my uh, uh, NDBIB, uh, other department is doing those kinds of things. So uh, I also sometimes engaging in those kinds of uh, valuation assignments. So equity. Uh, knowledge that I have gained through uh, level one, level two equity also uh, help me in those kinds of things. So if I say now uh, my uh, 
my employer ndb investment bank is doing those kinds of things but my group as a whole ndb capital cluster ndb capital cluster we have ndb wealth management also so ndb wealth management you know ndb wealth management has the largest uh, 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 maybe one of the largest uh, funds in sri lanka so they are into portfolio management they are into portfolio management so where which uh, you can uh, i mean if you can get any i mean knowledge with regard to the portfolio management in cfa then you can find a job maybe in kind of a asset management companies there are a lot of asset management companies in sri lanka so there are ample opportunities for you so that's why i told you that cfa is allowing you for career diversification if you want to go to asset manager then you have that knowledge if you want to become an investment banker you have that knowledge if you have want to become a banker you have that knowledge maybe if you want to become a lecturer you have that knowledge as well i mean with regard to the finance subjects so that have influenced my career personally personally i am feeling that uh, 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 i am feeling that uh, my career uh, ladder uh, may be uh, sharpened with this cfa qualification so one thing uh, i will agree with uh, shehan sir he told Uh, that uh, cfa is not about the difficulty right uh, even uh, my friends and my students sometimes asking the cfa is bit of a difficult exam right i mean it's in if you search uh, google in google uh, it comes uh, the most 10 difficult examinations in the world but i would say if you have dedication and commitment and if you allocate a good maybe in researchers it says 300 hours but i would say you have to i mean uh, maybe if you can allocate more hours in studying cfa you will be able to pass it on first attempt because uh, if we take cfa curriculum one book is around 500 pages with tiny uh, letters maybe we have that uh, six books of that type so maybe 3000 pages there are separate uh, uh, tuition providers i mean uh, separate uh, other uh, note providers also but however the commitment and dedication should be there mostly the important thing is commitment and dedication and also uh, maybe uh, as uh, still you are in uh, acca i mean doing acca and shehan sir showed you uh, the fee structure uh, fee structure so maybe some organizations are reimbursing i mean i know that because i am also coming from a, a kind of a, a small i mean not so rich family uh, some organizations some means uh, most of the organizations are reimburse uh, this uh, examination fee uh, which you are incurring to do the cfa if you are pass the exam and as well as there is a kind of i mean cfa scholarship programs also so you all can apply i mean uh, uh, maybe in social media i mean cfa site or maybe in different kinds of uh, groups uh, they publish uh, this cfa scholarship programs about cfa scholarship programs so you can uh, be alert on those things as well so maybe if you have the will i mean you can do this uh, qualifications i mean along with acca uh, cfa would be uh, a good combination uh, to uh, go up in the career ladder maybe in financial uh, perspective thank you over to rishi great thanks a lot uh, dilum for that i mean that was really uh, you know like a good uh, sort of uh, experience that you know we we all we all saw how you have progressed in in terms of a career with acc and then with cfa uh, just to highlight on one more thing that that dilu mentioned and i think this is something that uh, uh, was mentioned also before by some of the other speakers it is not a qualification that as mentioned like even though it's mentioned as something that's quite tough to achieve it's not really as it looks like you can definitely do it if you have your commitment and also one more thing guys it's if you can get through all the levels uh 
uh, in the first attempt, including even if you pay for your classes, it is still going to cost you less than doing an ACC qualification, like the complete ACC qualification, right? Uh, but this is, I'm saying, provided you, you get through in the first attempt. So it is an investment, true, but of course, there is enough support opportunities that you get. So we also have uh, uh, Travis over here, who is uh, heading the candidate council of uh, the CFA committee. And uh, as you can see, uh, we do give like, you know, uh, in, in CFA Society Sri Lanka, just give you opportunities like uh, in terms of like education loans and even like uh, special special credit cards that give you even installment uh, plans. So in terms of uh, funding for the exam, also you guys are sort of covered. So um, yeah, so that's about it from all the speakers. Any questions? This is the time for you guys to ask your questions. I mean, you guys can put the question on the chat or even you can ask it over the microphone. No issues on that. I mean, it's good to always keep it more interactive. And uh, myself, uh, Shehansa, Diluma, even uh, Travis uh, will be taking up any questions that you guys have. Yeah, any questions? You can use the chat option also, guys. Just to make it interactive, can you just put down a word saying yes or no? Do you have any questions? You know, first of all, maybe you can type the question later so we can wait for you at least. You know. Uh, hi, sir. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Vishen. Yeah. Hi. Sir. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I think we know each other, sir. Uh, like I was wondering, like I'm from audit background. If I were to start, like, uh, I mean, if I were to move to CFA, what would be the guidance? Like, uh, should I have to start from the beginning, like, uh, getting experience from, you know, credit rating agency, something like that, sir? Is there any way? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll take that question because I was also someone who started from an audit background and then moved on to finance. So... Yeah, so even I started my career as a as an Intel audit at KPMG, and then only I moved on into like investment research. Uh, so it's like this uh, in terms of I mean, see, like when it comes to fine, like even when it comes to ACC, right? You do like a mix of subjects, like coming from finance to accounting to auditing to uh, let's say to tax and so on. So what happens is like when it comes to CFA. Um, I mean, this qualification is not only like that's one thing we always good that you brought this question up because this is something that we always tell our students, you know, it's it's not, um, you know, like a qualification that's only for people who do finance. So definitely it will help you like, let's say, as an auditor for you in terms of understanding your 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 financial statements and even like uh, how, uh, you know, let's say now as you ask, like whether you want to get a shift to uh, I mean, whether it's like a complete shift for you. In my opinion, it's not going to be the case because even if you want to, if you have that qualification, then the understanding and depth that you have, definitely you can progress. So um, that's what I was, wanted to highlight at this point. Uh, it's not a quali qualification that just because you are only into accounting or finance, definitely as you can see if coming from this, you are someone who can, uh, you know, uh, like progress definitely in your career with CFA. Anything that uh, Dilum and uh, Shehan are also wants to add on this, and even Travis, anything from you on this? And yes, Vijay, and uh, even uh, I don't know uh, Dushan's uh, audit firm, but in Big Four, I have seen that uh, in every uh, Big Four audit firms, they have the separate divisions, right? I mean, currently Dushan is from audit background, but easily if he start pursuing CFA uh, examination. And if he can qualify it, then he can easily move from audit background to corporate finance division, maybe financial modeling and valuation department, or else corporate finance department, or else some other department. There are several restructuring departments also. So I think uh, no need to restrict uh, into, I mean, if 
I mean, no need to think uh, that I am in audit 10, whether I can pursue the CFA exam. That's why I always said that career diversification is there. Career diversification is there as well as geographical diversification is there. So you can diversify your career. So you have audit experience and also you have, you can uh, maybe request for a uh, department change to corporate finance division or in valuation departments or anything. So there are opportunities to show. Yeah, just to add on, I think uh, the overall thing is called the advisory services section where all of which, which Dilu mentioned gets covered, I believe. So uh, as correctly said, uh, um, uh, on uh, to support Dilum's answer, I'm going to say that they'll be happy to take you in there if you start CFA honestly, okay? Because there's a dire uh, requirement in terms of uh, CFAs in this country and in uh, the main workplaces as well. So if you say that you're going to start CFA and if you are looking at getting on to those uh, divisions of the audit firm itself, I'm, I'm, in, in my opinion, they'll be very pleased and happy to take you into those divisions. Thank yeah, you, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Vishant, for your question. And thanks, Dilum and Shams also. Any other questions? Yeah. Hello, hello, sir. I'm Naviz. Yes. Hi. Hi, Naviz. Uh, so, sir, I'm an ACC affiliate. I recently got through my ACC uh, qualification and uh, I'm just 22, 23 years old. In the meantime, uh, I'm also pursuing a degree in data science because I believe that uh, technology is playing a vital role in every job role. So I'm really passionate about merging. My want to know is uh, whether uh, pursuing CFA would be a, a, a ideal option for me. Is it uh, is technology aspects are being covered in the CFA curriculum? Because recently I read an article that uh, is machine learning concept and uh, like coding like Python and all being currently. Uh, I'm also working as a, a financial analyst uh, at EY in the financial due diligence division. Great. Yeah, that's a that's a great question, actually. Uh, uh, Travis, do you want to take that up with, uh, I think, R R Travis has a better idea about the, the new additions with machine learning and all those, uh, uh, the new modules that we're looking at, uh, Travis? Uh, yes, uh, th thanks for that question. Um, yeah, actually, uh, this is something, uh, I think one thing you can say about the CFA program in general uh, is that they are very proactive and, you know, almost, uh, I think uh, Richie and Dilum can also attest to that. Uh, that, uh, you know, it's uh, almost every year the syllabus gets updated. It's very uh, up to date and, you know, very current. Uh, so particularly with up and coming topics like machine learning, AI, uh, that's something that um, the CFA has also proactively been introducing. And this year, a major development was that they actually uh, introduced practical skills modules for level one and level two. And next year for level three also, it's going to be rolled out. Uh, and one of the options you can choose from is this Python uh, there's a Python programming fundamentals and oh, data oh, science oh. program. Um, so, so it's somewhere where you can, you know, you can, so uh, in the CFS syllabus, you would be learning about those techniques uh, and you can practically apply it uh, with this practical skills module. So I think the program has really understood the value of that. So yeah, it would really complement any other data science courses or things that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for the comment, sir. And uh, one more thing, I want to know where can the CFA books be purchased in Sri Lanka? Is there any specific uh, bookstore that you would recommend? Um, so, uh, so you uh, all of the books. So, when you register for the exam, you will basically get the complete curriculum. So, you get the ebook. So, that is the complete material that you need for that. Uh, and top of that, if you want the physical books as well, you can order those. Uh, as well through through the website yeah so yeah. so if you're studying yeah thank you uh sorry richie i think you're muted oh sorry yeah thanks yeah, so uh, just like Travis mentioned, uh, there is a, like you can get the physical books if needed. There is like a separate charge for it, but you get your ebooks free of charge as soon as you register for the exam. So you don't have to worry about getting the books like you already have your ebooks and 
uh, maybe with that if you want to you can also uh, if you want the physical books yeah you can pay a little more extra and get that yeah, i want to add on saying that is very comprehensive you know the study material provided by the cfa institute so uh, maybe when you get into this you will hear that there is this publisher there is that publisher you know but my personal opinion is uh, if you can go through the official content and be thorough with that along with the classes that we offer i think that is more than enough honestly because the volume is such that if you can cover that that's fine you know uh, I don't see a reason why you need to go anything uh, beyond that to find uh, other material. Okay, this is my personal point of view. Uh, there's another question which has come in. Okay, uh, I think uh, I'll open it out to the other uh, the other uh, speakers as well. Okay, I think the question goes like this. I'm working uh, in a UK personal tax team. This is a student on the final year of a bachelor's. So I believe, yes, you can start the program right now, even that's not an issue. Uh, a little bit of advice. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the advice uh, uh, look the individual is looking at is based on the fact that the individual is working uh, as a tax consultant or a tax person. Okay. Uh, I think, again, uh, the answer uh, to this to start off with would be and answer something similar to what was given uh, to Dushyan's answer, okay? Although you are at the moment on a separate, a little bit of a separate line uh, in terms of the overall finance aspect, which is tax, okay? Uh, but yes, you can uh, uh, basically uh, come into uh, uh, the CFA program without a, an issue and uh, Follow-up question would be, do I have to change my working organization to support CFA? So in terms of the work experience, uh, I'm sure a finance role in the same organization would also be sufficient. Uh, I, I guess uh, some of the chart holders can add on to what I'm saying. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that you have to shift, okay? But uh, I believe continuing in tax may uh, may not be the uh, right aspect to cover your experience requirement for the CFA qualification. Okay, and someone uh, reconfirm this, please. One of our other speakers. Yeah, uh, Dilum, you you want to comment on that? Yeah, like I think uh, tax will not be considered, but there are several uh, maybe professions uh, maybe related to investments portfolio management analysis so uh, if uh, she can uh, kind of join or maybe within that same organization or within uh, i mean another organization so no need to i mean hurriedly hurriedly uh, i mean quickly move from one to another she has time i mean from uh, when you start from level one to level two, level three, it will take some time. And at the same time, we can, I mean, she can uh, find a, a job relating to CFA. I mean, kind of a leisurely, she can uh, better to find maybe from tax field to maybe uh, portfolio or financial analyst or credit analyst or investment banking kind of thing. And Shansa, one thing I have to mention that I have seen uh, several uh, in my office also, there are engineers who possess, I mean, CFA qualification. So, I mean, two different. I, I have seen four or five of them working with my uh, organization and currently my group CEO also engineer who is having CFA qualification. And I have seen one of the best lawyers, or law firms have uh, lawyers with CFA qualification. So then the answer is so straightforward. If you are following maybe finance, maybe tax or audit or everything is maybe related to maybe somewhat related to finance or kind of a subject area, right? So then you don't have that. Uh, I mean, I think uh, that question is clear. You can have several paths. So maybe from audit to, like I said, corporate finance or from tax to another area. So that's not a problem for you to 
have that kind of a maybe career change or path or whatever. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, uh, that, Nilum. yes. In Nilum's point of view, as I mentioned, you know, like it's a complete change, you know, when you're trying to move from engineering or when you're a lawyer, but it has happened and those individuals, uh, as, as he correctly reminded me, I have a dear friend as well, you know, who started off in engineering and uh, now uh, heading a big organization, you know, but on finance, okay, not on engineering. You know? So the comparatively a career change can be massive for someone like that, okay, but they have gone through with it and still seen the benefits, okay. So to someone in tax and audit, comparatively, the change will not be very massively significant because uh, you, you guys have, have seen the qualifications that you mentioned, you know, you all are ACCA. So what, you, what you've learned is as uh, Richie shared through his presentation as well, it, it's definitely relevant, you know, okay, to this. So uh, it's definitely possible. I don't think uh, it will be a big task, but yes, as I, I will also confirm what Dilop said, you may have to move to that job uh, connected to finance and not continue in taxation uh, as requirement uh, as the requirement to get that work experience or to know to become a charter holder. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. Uh, I think that should give you all a good understanding about it. And also, if you see, Travis had uh, put up... Uh, a link so that is in case if you guys are wondering like to get the membership this is where that matters like the work experience so even if you guys are taking a shift like if you all have work experience into these areas if you can click on that link you can see uh that still you can just you can qualify to become a member so that's uh any other questions anything else uh hi sir i am Imad. i have one last small question yeah, uh, any tips for I mean how to manage the uh, the CFS studies with the full time work? Okay, great. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great question. So we can give different perspectives, probably. So, uh, yeah, in my opinion, all in 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 my case, of course, uh, that was the. I mean, I when I start when I started CFA, uh, to be honest, like you know, I was someone. I was about twenty one. I remember. So just after finishing ACCA. And uh, to be honest, many people told me not to do this qualification because they told me that uh, it's not something for you, for you to, uh, you know, it's very difficult and it's impossible, especially you're working full time. But trust me, if you can really dedicate yourself, I mean, nothing much. What I did was like every day, I just put in about one to two hours of studies, which I think is definitely possible. Uh, even uh, given like, even if you have a heavy workload, I mean, at least let's say an hour every day, if you can put in. Plus, if you can, uh, let's say your week, your, uh, I mean, let me, it comes to weekends, let's say you go for classes and you follow the classes and then plus you also can study a bit. And then uh, towards the exam, of course, you, you can organize your study leaves and plans and it's definitely possible. I mean, we have done it. So it's something that, I mean, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's more of a commitment. That's what matters at the end of the day. So it's not a qualification, just like Dilu mentioned, even though it's one of the, uh, you know, like if you look at, if you Google it up, even now it, it comes up like in the top three toughest exams, CFA is there. But honestly, it's not something that's impossible. But you can see that, of course, like being a qualification like that, it gives you that uh, sort of an elite, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of a, a, a tag behind your name. So that's what I would say, like in terms of commitment doing with uh, full time, I mean, uh, with full time, with full time working, I don't think you, have, you will have an issue as such. Uh, Dilum, you want to add to that? Yeah, I think you're on mute. Dilum, sorry. Yeah. So as you said, uh, one to two hours. I also, I mean, uh, I always searched uh, when uh, I started my CFA, how many hours you need uh, to study. So mostly if you also uh, searched, it says 300 hours would be enough. But uh, I felt that 300 hours uh, will not be enough for because I, I I started, I mean, I have learned my advanced level in Sinhala. And uh, so that's why, I mean, these uh, topics are in English and uh, topics are somewhat newer to us. So that 300 hours research will not be maybe applicable to us. 
So maybe we have to do more, maybe 500 hours. So frankly speaking, I have done more than that. So as Rishi said, uh, maybe every day, every day, two hours, maybe from, uh, maybe we have to have definitely maybe four to five months, full months. So two hours, maybe initial two months, then you have to increase that. Maybe weekends you have to utilize. So there is some sacrifice. There are some dedication. There are some commitment. So you have to sacrifice. Maybe as Richie said, uh, 21 year. I mean, he was 21 years old when he started. So definitely he has sacrificed maybe weekends and those kinds of parties and everything. So that's why that sacrifice, dedication and commitment gives you this qualification and you can reap the benefits after you get the qualification. So you have to sacrifice. I mean, you know, ACS, ACCA students also, you have to sacrifice some of the hours. So likewise, do some more. So you are, I mean, uh, nowadays uh, with the dollar depreciation and everything, the exam is become somewhat expensive also. So better to uh, do that extra hard work and pass the exam. So it would be beneficial to you in time, I mean, in monetary terms as well as maybe career goals or everything as well. So sacrifice, dedication and commitment is the answer. So you have to have your own timetable, maybe. So maybe uh, you can uh, study until night or you can uh, uh, get up in early morning. Or That's up to you. You uh, come up with a plan how to do then uh, execute the plan. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so you want, yeah, yeah, Travis, go on, yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, just, just a small thing to like add on to that. I think, um, yeah, like I think what Dilum and Richie has been saying is that this, um, the exam is not something that is like unattainable or unfeasible. What you just require is some advanced planning. So as long as you plan in advance, it's something very, um, feasible and I think as ACCA students I think you start from a very good base uh, because particularly when it comes to financial reporting and a lot of those the more quantitative topics you probably already have a um, where at level one there's a lot of um, with, uh, where there's a lot of weightage on those subjects you already have a good grounding in that and you're actually starting from a really good base for example in my case I, I'm, I'm not an ACCA member and uh, and I haven't actually done accounting uh, in A-level so you know so it was like a big struggle for me like doing like CFA I had to like dedicate a lot of time to like understanding that uh, but for someone who's coming from ACC I think you, you're starting with a really good base uh, so yeah so I mean make use of whatever strengths that you have like Richie highlighted there's a lot of areas where there's overlap uh, so you can make use of that and see what are the areas where you have more um, uh, which are more new to you, maybe you want to spend more time on that. So like that, you can, uh, you can, uh, you know, plan accordingly. And, you know, if you plan in advance, it's something very uh, feasible. And uh, from the CFA Candidate Council side and the CFA uh, Institute as well, there's a lot of these, they do a lot of webinars, uh, like giving different tips and strategies, how to prepare for the exam. And from the CFA Society Sri Lanka, we'll be, uh, there's a study tip session that will be coming up soon. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the resources that we provide for this. Yeah. And also adding to Travis, uh, Travis uh, explanation. So Travis, when you uh, get re go getting registered with CFA, I mean for exam, you will get a comprehensive uh, curriculum as well as a question bank as well. So it is very useful. I mean MCQs and those kinds of things, and also uh, maybe mock exams as well. So. Uh, those are very useful uh, so you can uh, use those things also so uh, CFA uh, when you get registered you will get the curriculum mock exam uh, maybe MCQ questions maybe 1000 no 1200 and as well as in curriculum also you have always the end of chapter questions every chapter you have 30 or 35 questions so if you attempt those things then definitely I would I would say you can yeah Thanks a lot, uh, Dilam. And, and uh, yeah, thanks, Travis. So I think that's one thing. Uh, when it comes to CFA, you get enough resources and uh, enough support, especially CFA Society Sri Lanka gives you a lot of support. And uh, I mean, if you guys are definitely willing to start the qualification, uh, you can, uh, you know, you can reach one of us. We'll definitely help you out in terms of uh, what the process is and how do you register and uh, in terms of classes, of course, 
already i think uh, uh, it's already being mentioned like how alpha con uh, conducts the classes for these uh, uh, you know for, for uh, we we do have classes at for level 1 currently but also support is now provided in terms of uh, level 2 revision as well so there's enough support which is being provided so you guys are not alone when it comes to this so that's what we want to let you guys know uh, any other questions Great. So I think uh, that's pretty good in terms of, I mean, uh, we did hear a lot from you guys in terms of feedback and questions. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And once again, like I said, you guys are the best and the ideal candidates to do CFA. So consider it. And if you are considering it, and especially in terms of like, you know, let's say you want to start it, whenever it is, it doesn't have to be right away. You can take your time, think about it, because we understand in terms of finances also, it's not, uh, it's not very easy these days. Uh, so still, like I said, there's a lot of support that's provided. So if there is any hindrance that you guys, and even uh, one more thing, I think we couldn't mention that uh, CFA also offers uh, scholarships, guys. So if you all, if you all feel like, you know, that is a hindrance for your uh, finance is the problem that you want to do CFA, but you can't, definitely you can get that support as well. So contact us. And uh, if, uh, if any help that we can do from our end, we will definitely do for you guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, and thank you once again to uh, Dilum, Aziz, and uh, from Alphabet School Shansa as well. I think uh, it was a great informative session for you guys. And uh, please feel free to let us know if any questions uh, you can, you can always get in touch with us. Yeah, that's about it then. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks, thank everyone. Bye-bye.